Okay. Scene safety BSI. Scene safe. All right. Uh, so we have one patient. One patient. All right. So at this time, I want to uh, activate additional resources. You said the police are on scene. We're going to activate fire. Um, we want to get ALS uh, started towards us, and we'll call for a BLS unit as well for additional resources. Motor vehicle accident car versus tree. You said was the mechanism of action. Yes. Okay. Um, and at this point, one patient, I'm going to direct my partner to take inline immobilization of C-spine. And as I approach my patient, what do I see? You find a 26-year-old male lying supine on the ground. There is no obvious hemorrhage or agonal breathing. The patient is lying next to the car on the shoulder of the road. Police have secured the scene and are diverting traffic. The car struck a tree head on. There is 18 inches of intrusion to the front end of the vehicle. There's an airbag deployment, starring on the windshield, and steering wheel deformity. Okay. Um, based off of the mechanism, we're going to say this is a high priority patient. We want to uh, immediately start to uh, assess this patient and minimize our scene time. My partner has inline immobilization of C-spine. I'm going to try to elicit a response from my patient by calling out with verbal stimuli. Hey, sir, do you hear me? No answer. I'm going to try to elicit a painful response. No response. All right, so at this time, my patient is unresponsive. My partner has inline immobilization of C-spine. I'm going to come in, and I'm going to open the airway with a modified jaw thrust. I'm checking for patency by looking if there's any bleeding, uh, teeth, tissues, secretions, vomitus in the airway. Do I find anything? Patient's airway is patent. Okay, so the patient is unresponsive, so at this time, unable to protect their own airway. We're going to measure from the tip of the ear to the corner of the mouth. I'm going to size and insert an OPA. We're going to insert that at a 90-degree angle, and we're going to rotate that until the, flush, uh, the flange is flush with the lips. Does my patient accept the OPA? He does. All right, so we've now secured airway. We're going to move on to breathing. I'm going to expose the chest, cut away clothing, and I'm first inspecting. So I'm looking, and I'm trying to see, do I have symmetrical chest rise with ventilation? Do I have any discoloration, any signs of paradoxical motion or open sucking chest wounds that I need to address immediately? Paradoxical motion on the right side. Okay, so we have paradoxical motion on the right side. Um, that's indicative of a flail segment. I'm going to listen to lung sounds, and I'm determining the rate rhythm and quality of my breathing. Patient is breathing at a rate of 34 times a minute. Respiratory rate is regular and shallow. Okay, so at this time, we're going to use positive pressure ventilation to help stabilize the flail segment on the right side. Uh, we're also going to uh, assist ventilations with an inadequate shallow ventilatory rate. So we're going to do this with a BVM. I'm going to have my partner ventilate one breath every six seconds for a total of 10 breaths a minute. We're going to attach our BVM to high flow oxygen, good mass seal, and we're going to ventilate just until we see good chest rise. With ventilations, with the BVM by my partner, are we able to get better stability, stability of the flail segment on the right side? Yes. And do we have symmetrical chest rise? Yes. All right. So now that we've got breathing and we've got our patient on oxygen, we're going to move on to our circulation. Uh, so do I have uh, a carotid and a radial pulse? You do. Okay, and what is the rate, rhythm, quality of my pulses? Pulse is tachycardic at a rate of 104 beats per minute, weak but present radial pulse, strong carotid pulse. Okay, so I have a carotid and radial that match, the radial is weaker, uh, my patient's tachycardic. Uh, skin vitals on my patient? Pale, cool, and diaphoretic. Okay, so my patient is starting to show me up with signs of shock, and any bleeding that I see anterior? No obvious signs of hemorrhage. All right, um, any superficial bleeding anywhere? Superficial laceration above the right eye. Right eye, okay, we'll deal with that later. Um, and I'm gonna do a quick posterior glove sweep, so as I come behind the head, and as I pull my gloves in and out at each location, checking to see if there's any blood return, do I have anything under the posterior aspect of my patient for bleeding? No. All right, so we've done our ABCs. My patient is unresponsive. They're pale, cool, diaphoretic. We're ventilating them. This is a high priority patient. We're going to start to get them out of wet clothes, and we're going to start to immediately treat for shock. Uh, we're going to do that by keeping them warm, out of wet clothes, and we're going to start to get blankets and heading towards the ambulance. I'm going to call for a long board, and as I'm doing that, I'm going to start my rapid assessment. So I'm going to start at the top of the head. Do I notice any deformities? No obvious skull depression. Okay, do I notice anything behind the ears? Any fluid from the ears or battle signs? No. Okay, uh, pupils, I'm checking to see, uh, are the pupils, are they equal? They're round, do they respond to light? Yes. Uh, is there any fluid or blood from the nose? No. Is my patient still accepting the OPA with a, a clear patent 
uh, airway? Yes. All right, and we have a good mass seal. Do I have a good bag compliance by my partner with the BVM? Yes. All right, ventilations are still going in. So as I move to the neck, I'm checking for if the trachea is midline. Do I sign any signs of JVD or tracheal deviation? No. As I come behind the neck and I check for any step-offs, do I find any step-offs? No. So we're going to size and apply a cervical collar from the corner of the neck to the trapezius, make sure that this is applied appropriately so we can still visualize tracheal deviation, JVD, through and check pulses through the window of the collar, make sure that the clavicles are intact. It sits firmly on uh, bare skin so as to not manipulate C-spine. Does my patient accept my intervention? Yes. All right. So we have our patient exposed again. I'm now palpating down the sternal body. I'm checking the uh, integrity of the thoracic cavity. I know I have paradoxical motion on this right side. So I'm going to be gentle with this, checking over an inspiratory and expiratory phase. Do I have good chest rise and stability of that paradoxical motion with ventilation? Interventions are holding. Okay, so uh, reassessing lung sounds. Any change in my lung sounds? No. Okay, we're going to divide the abdomen into four quadrants at the umbilicus. I'm now palpating all four quadrants of the abdomen. So as I do this, do I notice any distension, rigidity, warmth, anything that would be indicative of any type of internal bleeding? Soft, non-distended. Okay, so as I come in, I'm going to pass in and down on this pelvis. I'm checking for any type of instability. Intact. Okay. Uh, any incontinence of urine feces, and I have a male patient, so do I have any uh, indications of priapism? No priapism, mild incontinence of urine. Okay, so since they're mild incontinent, we're going to be sure to get them out of these wet clothes, start to warm them up, and as I come through and I circumferentially and offset my femurs, do I notice any deformity to the femurs? No. As I check lower on my lower extremities, do I notice any signs of deformity or injury to the lower extremities? No. All right, and as I check for pedal pulses, do I have them? Yes. All right, and as I check the upper arms, I check the shoulder girdle and down, and I notice, do I compare my pedal pulse, uh, my radial pulses on either side. So as I compare these, do I have present pedal pul uh, radial pulses? Yes. All right, and do I have any injury to the upper arms? No. All right, so at this time, uh, our injuries are to the chest on the right-hand side. So we're gonna log roll the patient away from those injuries toward me on the left-hand side. So our long board has now come with the appropriate number of resources. On the headman's count, we're going to interlock arms at the shoulders and the, uh, the pelvis, uh, and we're gonna log roll the patient up towards me to check the posterior. So on the headman's count, one, two, three. The patient is up. I'm checking the back of the head for any deformity. None. I'm checking through the collar. Collar's still in place. Yes. The back is exposed and I'm palpating down the vertebrae, checking for any deformity, anything found? None. Uh, we've removed the clothing. Has that uh, fixed the incontinence? Yes. All right, and any injuries to the lower extremities? None. We're now on the head man's count, gonna log roll this patient onto a long spine board. We're going to secure them appropriate with straps at the chest, the pelvis, the knees, padding any voids, making sure that our patient is secured with head blocks. At this point, my partner can release in line immobilization as we have them fully immobilized. As we load them into the ambulance, we're gonna to try to get a sample history. Is any able to be obtained? By standard information, by standards tell you the patient was the driver of the vehicle. The patient exited the vehicle and then collapsed in the position that you found him. Okay, so other than that, no other type of sample history. So we're going to uh, start uh, en route to the trauma facility. We're gonna do a level one trauma facility based on the priority of this patient, high priority. All future interventions and assessments are gonna take place while we're driving to the hospital. So we've got the ambulance warmed. We're treating our patient for shock with blankets, warming up the back of the ambulance, and we're now gonna get our uh, baseline set of vitals. Heart rate 110, respiratory rate controlled by partner with BVM, blood pressure 92 over 78, pupils pearl, CBG 90, O2 stent 95 on high flow O2, skin vitals, pale cool diaphoretic. Okay, so we've got our baseline set of vitals. We're going to continue to monitor and treat this patient for shock. Um, at this point in time, we can go through and we can treat our secondary injuries doing our head-to-toe assessment while we travel to the hospital. So at the top of the head, any deformity? Superficial laceration above the right eye. So at this time, uh, we can cover that with our sterile gauze. We're going to use that to control bleeding and uh, prevent infection. Does that work? Yes. Okay. Uh, the ears are covered by the head blocks, but there was no bleeding or fluid from the ears. No. Nothing from the nose? 
No. Uh, patient's still accepting the OPA, no need to suction? Yes. I'm checking through the window, any JVD, tracheal deviation? No. All right, so as we come back, uh, we're checking the clavicles, they're intact? Yes. I'm checking down the sternal body, and I'm checking the, the integrity of the thoracic cavity, any change? Interventions are still working. I'm listening to my lung sounds, any change in my lung sounds? No. No. So as we come in, we're going to check through the abdominal cavity. Any change, any uh, rigidity, distension, any signs of any uh, internal bleeding taking place? No. I'm pushing in and down my pelvis. Does it remain stable? Intact. All right. Any change to the femurs? No. All right. And do I notice anything to the lower extremities? Deformed ankle on the lower leg. Okay. Um, on which leg? Right leg. All right, so uh, it's angulated, you said, so I'm going to check for a pulse. Is there a present pulse in the angulated extremity? Yes. Uh, there is. All right, so if there's an angula if there's a pulse in the angulated extremity, uh, we're not going to realign it. We're going to go ahead and we're going to splint that as found. Uh, does that intervention hold? Yes. Okay, so at this time, we're going to continue to reassess this patient. We're going to monitor, reassess all of our interventions, especially our primary assessment ABCs, treat the patient for shock, and we're going to monitor this patient at least every five minutes on the way to a level one trauma center where we'll transfer care to an equal or higher health care provider.